I have a history of going for the red flags um, and the wrong type. This this video has already gone viral. Already. <laughs> so I thought maybe my problem is I don't give the green flags a try. And I had this theory that like, so I've heard before that if you meet someone and you get instant butterflies, that's actually a red flag and you shouldn't trust the butterflies. And I'm like, well, that makes sense because I've had some butterflies for some dumb motherfuckers. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm always waiting to feel an instant connection. And maybe I'm like, maybe I should just give it someone a chance and see if the connection builds like and I was like oh I'm gonna try this crazy thing where I actually get to know someone before I fuck them and um um during the little courting period he uh started sending me poems uh which at first I thought was cute uh in hindsight is cringe <laughs> anyway so one of these poems he did refer to himself as the green flag guy and um they were quite they got at first they were like cute then they started getting suggestive and I was like oh this guy's actually because I thought this guy was probably maybe a bit frigid or something because he didn't try anything the first time and then his um, poems were quite like referred to what he was going to do in the bedroom and, and made himself sound really confident in the bedroom so I was like oh he's like this is quite surprising like he must be pretty good if yeah. he's gonna, if he's, time to if, walk the walk gonna, boy exactly he did not walk the walk it was <laughs> so I decided to like let's just do this I'm gonna go there even though I still hadn't felt the really strong attraction yet and then went there and it was fucking terrible and <laughs> welcome back to the Sevo show we are here with a guest that has been on the show before back in may 2021 or probably june sometime when i actually put it live but we have nikki valentine that is actually her real name too her stage name is it goes around different names all the time depending on which creep she's talking to but she's an absolute goddess. She's got some tattoos. And if you're listening uh, only on the Spotify or the uh, Apple podcast, definitely hit up the YouTube if you like your girls with tats because she's a ripper. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. I'll uh, just correct you there. Nikki Valentine is a stage name. So it started off as my stripper name. Damn it. You told me. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> that was my stripper name. Then it became my comedy name. Um, my real name is Nikki Justice. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you go back to the first episode, I do remember you saying the same thing. So, <laughs> thanks. But yeah, it's a good stage name. And uh, well, I'm born on Valentine's Day. That's where I got it from. There it is. Mm. So last time we had a chat, you were only just about to step into the uh, world of stand up. Yes, I think I might have done my first open mic at that point when we did the podcast. Yeah. Um, but literally, like one or two at tops. Um, yeah, now I'm still doing stand-up and it's, I wasn't sure if I would stick at it back then because I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but it's been going really well. Are you having fun? Yeah, fuck yeah. Was, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's been your, yeah, fuck yeah, that's okay, good. I'm allowed to swear. Yeah, you can say that one. Um, <laughs> what has been your highlight so far? Ooh, um, my favourite gig uh, that I've done, so the highlight of doing comedy is always when you're crushing on stage and the audience reaction just feels amazing. Um, and my favourite gig that I've ever done was down in Mandra. Um, the crowd, I think they're a bit bogan, so they, they, really, they really took to me down there. That's your crowd? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was just a really, really fun night. It was my best, it felt like the best um, set I'd ever delivered and it was just, yeah, it was in the, the – I've taken a lot of drugs and there's a high you can't get from drugs that come from doing well on stage in yeah. comedy. So, yeah. 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 And you did the sober? Um, uh, like ish, sober ish. I'd had a couple of drinks. Yeah, a couple of confident <laughs> shots. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. So what does it feel like when you, uh, but between uh, almost two years ago mm -hmm. and now going up on stage, what's the difference? Um, oh, I can, st I still get really nervous before I go on, um, but I do all these, yeah, if I'm, if I'm doing stuff that I'm, I've already tried and tested, then I go on pretty confidently but I still get the nerves before I go on stage. So I do all these things like it's – I don't know if it works or if it's like placebo effect but I do tapping so I'm like – and in my head I'm like repeating these mantras and I tap different points on your body to help move the energy through mm -hmm. and I, I'm pretty weird backstage. <laughs> yeah. Have you had hecklers yet? Um, a couple. Uh, I had one once at the Comedy Lounge um, – 
and it was the first time I'd dealt with one well uh, because usually um, if someone interrupts my set, I get thrown off and I get I struggle to like remember where I was and get back on track. Um, so it freaks me out if someone interrupts. But that guy, I um, can't remember what he yelled out, but it was in the middle of a set of me talking about men who can't make me come. And I just basically pointed out that he was probably one of those kind of men and everyone <laughs> cheered and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and then did he shut up after that? <clears throat> um, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Called him out. Yeah. So your, what is your comedy based around? Um, so most of it is inspired by my real life, but I do exaggerate things a little bit. Um, so I went through a, a quite a messy divorce, so that features a fair bit. Uh, it still does. Um, kids, I've got three of them. <laughs> um, my kids are pretty funny as well, so they, they give me a lot of content. Um, dating, sex life. Um, I take the piss out of myself and all the weird crazy things I've done in the past and um, yeah so it's all mostly just yeah about my life but and trauma <laughs> make it funny. And now you're bringing it all together for the Fringe Festival this is your first one? Yeah so this is the first show that like this is the first show that's mine but um so what I'm doing is I've got a lineup of comedians so I'm probably I'm the only um new comedian so everyone else is um uh, uh, quite established and pro, so I've got a really good lineup of comedians each night, and it's held at um, Delicious, which is a male um, strip club or um, the male performers, so it's more of a ladies' bar. Um, so it's called Hot Blokes and Spicy Jokes, and so there'll be a lineup of comedy, and then the strippers will be there serving drinks with their shirts off and um, doing a full Monty strip at the end. Oh, <laughs> are you going to be in, in amongst the act <clears throat> of the uh, boys? The strip, oh, I think I deserve to be. <laughs> Um, no, I went there for content the other night just to get some pictures and um, I ended up getting like, they got me to lay down and they're like doing the, doing their strip stuff on me. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Did they make you come? No. <laughs> uh, add it to the list of men that can't make you come. Well, that's not what I was there for, so that's okay. No expectations. As long as you had a good time. <laughs> it was funny. So uh, in, in, in amongst all the chaos with your comedy stuff, what else have you been up to? Um, so I started a tattoo apprenticeship. Um last year, so around, I think, May, yes. Um, so I started a tattoo apprenticeship, which is something I've always wanted to do. Um, and that's been going really well. I feel like I'm just starting to hit my stride a little bit and um, uh, with the techniques and stuff and I'm starting to do more tattoos that I actually like doing because uh, when you first learn, you're just always doing all the little little, little yeah, tattoos. Yeah, so you're off, the, you're off the pigskin and orange stuff, oranges? Yeah, I didn't really. Uh, my mentor, so everyone mentors differently. My mentor didn't really like the fake skins um, and so I was pretty much straight on to humans, which my first tattoos were on myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're pretty good first ones. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was my first one ever, um, that one there. And you did that yourself? Yeah. Wow. What's it like tattooing yourself as opposed to somebody else? Um, it's actually fine. I thought it was going to uh, hurt more or I thought I would hesitate going in, but yeah, it was fine. I guess, I guess because you It wasn't my first time it. either. I've tattooed myself drunk before, so... <laughs> <laughs> that word that I'm not allowed to say, it's tattooed on the inside of my lip. <laughs> oh. I don't want to get demonetized before I even get monetized <laughs> on YouTube. So I don't think they like the word fuck, yeah, yeah. but whatever. So, um, but yeah, keeping on the, the tattoo side, um, you've got a fair few yourself. Mm -hmm. When was your first tattoo? My first tattoo... Um, it was a oh, so white girl. <laughs> it's a Chinese symbol, of course, and um, it's it's actually a funny story because I went into this tattoo shop, just turned eighteen, and it was like on the board, and it said spirit underneath, and I ignorantly decided that that I was like, oh, that means free spirit to me, so I'm like free spirit, and that's one. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so I got this spirit tattooed on my back, and then I was working maybe. A, a couple of years later with this Chinese guy and he saw my tattoo and he's like, why'd you get that? And I was like... Oh, my God. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, it's, it's like spirit, like free spirit. He's like, no, bad spirit, demon. <laughs> oh, no. So we're walking around with a demon on my back. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And that's pretty much been uh, the monkey on your back forever, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of covered up now. I ended up getting a bigger tattoo over the rest of my back. Um, so it's kind of like in amongst that. Can't really see it as much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So being a tattoo apprentice, are you almost finished? Are you uh, in the books now or what's um, the go? No, so tattoo apprenticeships um, can go, it depends on your mentor, but um, can go from anywhere to like one to four years, depending on your skill and your mentor. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, there's no, there's nothing formal in a tattoo apprenticeship. So it's just, there's, it's just up to your boss. 
and all the uh, all the tattoo parlors are, are they're controlled by one entity. Um, is that is that is that a thing? Can we talk oh, about that? Yeah, or yeah is we can that... talk about that. So there is still um, there is still an association with most tattoo shops, not all, but most tattoo shops. Either if they're not ran, if they're not owned and ran by a club, which th- there's a lot of tattoo shops that aren't now, but they're still backed by a club. So you got you basically got to pay a club protection money um, so that other clubs don't firebomb you because they don't like the club paying you the protection money. Makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense to me, but it's um, like I didn't think um, that that was a thing. Yeah, anymore. no, it still happens. So if you open up a studio and it's in someone's what they consider their area, yeah, you have to pay them. Or pay for it in other ways. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> and um, does that uh, does that like scare you a little bit or anything like that? No, um, I've lived in that world for a while. Yeah. <laughs> my ex, as you know from the last podcast, is um, a barky, yeah. my baby daddy. Um, so yeah, so I've been around that world for a while. So it doesn't scare me. It's just yeah. I just think well, I've had I've had like good good kind of experiences with them. Like a, a, a good friend of mine, he's passed away now crashed his motorcycle his Harley um he was he was he was a bikey yeah um but yeah ever since I grew up his dad was a bikey yeah and uh we're always cool you know I think it's just like any group of people there's some real shit ones and there's some really (laughs) nice ones (laughs) yeah Except for vegans, they're all shit. Yeah. Especially the ones that tell you tell you. I how was to a eat. vegan once. <laughs> I was a vegan once, but I was a nice vegan, and mm. um, I didn't like most of the other vegans. I went on. I joined vegan Facebook pages for like tips and recipes and stuff, and I was like, "Wow, you're all assholes." This is just a circle jerk. And I, I wasn't mean, like vegan jerk. enough. Like, there's you got. It's like, how far do you take it? Like, you're not allowed to use the beeswax lip balm because it's got beeswax in it. It's like. Well, I didn't kill the fucking bee. No. <laughs> Go for it, please. <laughs> Let loose. So, yeah, no, the, the vegan, I, I've, I've seen some interesting Facebook pages. Mm. There's one called um, Spill the Tea or something. Mm. It had 130,000 women all over Australia in it. Now, for some reason it's exclusively women, so it's like a women's so it's female club. female vegans spilling tea. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't vegans. Oh. <laughs> There probably were, but okay. and um, yeah, I nearly got cancelled from that group. Oh, I wasn't in the group. Yeah, I got a, a few fans from that group yeah. who were uh, um, letting me know that they started talking about me because of because my antics you, on you, TikTok. Because of the anti, like the meat stuff you post. No, 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 nothing to do with vegans. This oh, was okay. this was spill the tea. This is like they oh. talk shit about that. They they pick someone and they go fuck this person. Oh. Let's talk shit about them and let's oh. make let's make oh, their so life. Oh, so it's like a literal witch hunt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's fun. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> one of my favorite comedians, or a, a whole bunch of my favorite comedians, even Robin Williams, right? Mm. They all did these accents to portray different characters, mm. and some of these accents involved, you know, different ethnic groups like yeah. Asian. Yeah. And I grew up watching that, and I'm like, cool. I yeah. want to do that as a comedic thing, not making fun of every anyone, just doing that mm. accent to portray that character. And Instagram had this feature or this filter where it come up with emojis. You have to guess the film or a catchphrase or a, a slogan or whatever. And there was a trend going on saying if you did it in an Asian accent, you would actually be able to guess it a lot quicker. And it worked. So I did that, put it on TikTok. 99.9% of the comments were like, that's hilarious. Mm. That's amazing. And a few people who said that they were Vietnamese were like, man, you do that Vietnamese accent better than I do and I'm yeah. Vietnamese, you know. And then had a couple of white women. I say white women because they're all white women, yeah, always yeah. white women. Get, got offended on their behalf, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, they commented on that and I was just like, oh, fuck off, come on, take a mm-hmm. joke. I'm mm-hmm. not offending anyone, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, um, a week later I got a – like a, a heads up on Instagram DMs mm. from one of the members saying, hey, Sev, been a big fan of you for so long, um, love all your content, not against it, just letting you know that there's this post mm. and there's like hundreds of comments of people just having a, having a go. Yeah. And, yeah, so I looked into it and I was like, holy fuck. And then I had a couple of chick friends who were in the group as well. I was like, hey, can you uh, go in and, I don't know, help help me out here? And they were fighting them and then I was getting screenshots of all these all these back and forths yeah. and they were just trying to justify, they were saying all this shit and I'm just like, you guys are more nastier than I am and yeah. I wasn't even trying to be nasty at all. Yeah. 
And then bottom line was um, I had to take the videos down because they found my school that I worked at and they emailed my principal. And I'm like, wow. And then um, one of them, like I call her the ringleader. Yeah. I'll never mention her name, but she's, she was 21 at the time. I figured out everything about her really quickly because yeah. she's an idiot. Um, where she lived, the address, where, where her business was, what her dog's name was, what her partner's name was, and everything. Sounds creepy. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, does sound creepy, but I don't. They did I don't, it first. I don't, yeah, I don't stalk people, but yeah. I'm like, when you're yeah, when you're yeah. about to come. When at someone's me, come for you, yeah. you do your you do your background yeah. research to. Now yeah. this is where the bikey thing comes oh. back in because a good friend of mine, he's uh, he's got connections. Yeah. And he's in our boys group chat, and mm-hmm. he he privately messages me. He goes, "Sev, do you want me to do something?" I was like. No, nah, man, don't. Yeah. He's like, I can. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. And uh, that was it. I was going to actually like message her like, and just spook her a little bit saying, um, your dog's name, very cute. Um, <laughs> I love the business that you run because she had a, like a yeah, yeah. business. And uh, I was going to do it. And then at the she last minute. She would have just turned that against you. Exactly, exactly. You. So like, I look left at him it. threatening me. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to stoop down to that level. Yeah. Glad and unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, my principal had a conversation with me and then standards and integrity was called up. Yeah. And uh, out of my best interest, I pulled the videos. Yeah. And it, nothing had happened after that at all. Mm. But I was just like, man, that's how easy it is for just one person to get offended. It's so yeah. bullshit. Yeah, we live in a weird time now. Yeah. Like I just feel like I do get sometimes when they explain the reasons why we shouldn't do or say certain things anymore and I get it but at the same time if someone does do it, I just feel like it's not our job to go through life not offending people and if I'm offended by something, I don't feel like I have to make some, hold someone responsible for mm. it. Like um, it's okay to be offended. Move on. Yeah. So what do you feel <laughs> about that? Move on. Don't follow that person anymore. So cancel culture, do you think it's uh – have we gone full circle and it's, it's on the bullshit. other end? I think cancel culture can exist to a certain degree for like really bad things. Like that man's a rapist, cancel him, sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but for, you know, things like Sev posted a video that had offended a white woman on behalf of some Asians, no, don't cancel Sev for that. Like it's it's too far. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Yes. And uh, what about comedians who are generally making a living out of, you know, these subtle jokes? Yeah, um, that's a tough one. There's a lot going around at the moment. Um, I personally like to just stick to making jokes about myself and not upsetting any other mm. minorities or and like I've got nothing anyway and I've got nothing against anyone. I'm very much a live and let live kind of person. I don't have strong opinions about the way other people choose to live their lives. Yeah, life but that's not – I'm not even mentioning that about people. I'm like, yeah. you want to be this, that, yeah, go yeah. for it. But if you yeah. want to preach to me, then fuck you. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um, there are some comedians that push it and like to make jokes about um, touchy subjects. But I don't really see that they're cancelled. They might not get as many gigs. But I feel like I feel like those people that haven't really lived an interesting life themselves to, to warrant something of humorous value to the audience. Mm. You know, like I've, I've seen a few stand-ups in my time and – like I've seen all the all the comics in Perth, and mm. then like the ones that are still around, they're, yeah. they're amazing. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of a pattern where you kind of you kind of just punchlining after punchlining. What, what's your kind of style? Do you build to a climax, or do you kind of go and and pepper it throughout your? Um, so when I first started, I would just, you know, have my premise, um, you know, my topic and then have a punchline and then I'm like, next joke. But now I've, I've learned to, um, build the joke up. And so like now my first punchline is a setup for a better one. Mm. Um, and, um, I'm starting to try and put like act outs in between the punchlines as well. That's sort of, um, I just, I just think they help the jokes land better and more, more fun and more entertaining. Um, yes. And how do you go about uh, the men after the gigs? Are they hitting you up? Um, nah, I don't think um, – there's been a, there's always a couple. There there's we always, go. We're yeah. in. <laughs> Story time. There's always a couple. There was one at Fremantle Comedy Club once who was talking to me before the show and he didn't realise I was on the lineup. He was just chatting to me at the bar and um, – 
you could tell he was a bit of a knob, but I just humoured him and was chatting. And then, then he, when he realised I was on the show because he saw my set, and then he came up afterwards and asked, he was asking, like, is that all, was that all true? Like the stuff about the bahis and la la. I was like, yeah, mostly. And then he was sort of hovering around, and then he came up to me and he went to start talking. Then he goes. Actually, never mind. And what did he say? He pretty much said something along the lines of, if that's all true, you're too much hard work and walked off. And I was like, wait, did he think he had a shot with me? But then now I'm not good enough for him because my jokes <laughs> put him off. <coughs> but um, I just thought it was really bizarre because he was this, like, he was definitely no catch. And he, <laughs> he was coming to try and basically, yeah, you could see him like fighting with himself. Like, I want to hit this girl up. But no, she's got all this fucking baggage from her thing. But then he had, like just said it. And I was like, what the fuck? It was weird. I yeah. just got rejected by someone that I didn't want, obviously. But <laughs> Put you on a pedestal. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you're you're single now? Yes. Ish, maybe? No, I'm definitely 100%. Up and down? 100% single. What's, I just keep hitting. And, and we you're all in, do that sometimes. And you're in your early 30s? Um, no, I'm in my late 30s now. Let's pretend you're early 30s. Okay. <laughs> so early 30s, um, what is the Perth go-to scene to – find a candidate that is reasonably good enough to talk to? Um, oh, I definitely don't have like a stomping ground, a place to go <laughs> or a plan. Yep. And um, the best nights I've had is when there was no plan. I always found like, so when I was single the last time, not this time, but the time before my recent ex, I was really hitting the hoe phase hard. And if I went out looking to go home with someone, I usually, it was usually like I wouldn't find it all the time. But the nights I went out not looking, they're the nights where it would just sort of usually happen yep. naturally and more fun because it was crazy. Or... And and the nights you weren't going looking, did you do the Bridget Jones's diary and not wear like the special underwear? <laughs> okay, so one of the most recent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another story time. Uh, one Getting of the most nuggets. recent hookups I had, which was a very interesting one. There was more than one other partner involved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go on. And um, for that one, okay, so I've got to a point in my life where I wear Spanx now. <laughs> Same. So um, I was wearing these like Spanx undies that tuck everything in and so like right before like things started happening, I was like, I just need to go to the bathroom and freshen up and I'm like trying to rip my Spanx off. <laughs> so hot. And then I just like hid them and put them in my bag and then so then it, like when it progressed a little bit later, the guy was like, oh, she's not wearing underwear. I'm like, yeah, I just do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, no, uh, the, the situation was not that sexy. He thought it was. <laughs> he just didn't know that I was ripping off my Spanx. <laughs> Most guys don't know that. Yeah. I don't like I'm it. Spanx right now. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like, I'm not a fan of Spanx because I'm very touchy-feely with my wife. Mm. I had to say that last bit just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely changed the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you know you can you can feel it. Yeah. Um. I like the I like the squish. Yeah. Yeah. But um. When when uh when it's time to get intimate, she's she's already like kind of like yeah fuck the spanks off. Yeah. Um. But when you are going out and looking, mm. no spanks. <sighs> no. Now that I feel like I've already figured out, I can just rip them off right before the day. <laughs> The hack. I could, yeah, if I was going out looking, yeah, you want to make sure you're comfortable. You've got to feel well, – that's the thing. If you're going out looking, you've got to feel sexy. Spanks don't – they might make you look better. They don't necessarily make you feel better. So it's like a – Yeah. 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 Mm. So in the Perth scene, and this is something that's common with my uh, chick friends of Perth who are single, um, they're, they're not f – they're striking out. They're, I mean, and I mean in a way they're not finding anyone. Mm. And their standards aren't that high, but they're just, they're just telling me that there's, there's, nobody, uh, there's nobody in Perth. So let's start with the girls. Mm. What advice would you give to them if they're trying to find their better half? My honest advice is don't try. Just go out and do, enjoy yourself. Go out to have fun. Go out with your friends. Um, focus on yourself being happy and I feel like it's more likely to occur naturally that way. If you're desperate, you're going to end up lowering your standards and um, settling for someone because you are desperate to have someone. Yeah. So I think it's getting to a point where you don't care so much about having someone. You yeah. just want to have fun and be happy and then someone will come along and hopefully and compliment that at some point. I know that's a little fairy tale I've told myself. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. And uh, what about the boys? A um, couple of tips for them. 
couple of tips for them. Oh, so What many. not to do. <laughs> Start with what not to what do. What not to do. Can we skip straight to the bedroom part? No. Okay, and let's talk about what not to do. Okay, so I... <laughs> Before you get to the bedroom funny part. Funny story, we'll, actually. We'll All through. right, so I have a history of going for the red flags. Um, and the wrong type. This this video has already gone viral. <laughs> so I thought maybe my problem is I don't give the green flags a try. And I had this theory that like, so I've heard before that if you meet someone and you get instant butterflies, that's actually a red flag and you shouldn't trust the butterflies. And I'm like, well, that makes sense because I've had some butterflies for some dumb motherfuckers. So I was like, okay, <laughs> maybe I'm always waiting to feel an instant connection. And maybe I'm like, maybe I should just give it someone a chance and see if the connection builds like and I was like oh, I'm gonna try this crazy thing where I actually get to know someone before I fuck them and um I thought like this was gonna it's be a, a new concept. way of life for me it didn't last long though because I met this green flag guy called that was literally and he even he even used that term on himself which in hindsight red flag what yes what did he call himself a green flag yes yes in Can, a poem, tell me tell me in the a exact... poem that he wrote me oh give oh my god I want to hear this poem <laughs> Oh, Amazing. my God. And I came up with a reply poem last night actually in my uh, – I didn't end up using it on stage, but I wish I did because I was doing 50 First Jokes last night. Um, I've come up with a reply reply poem. So this dude, okay, he's a n- nice guy, has no red flags, hasn't been to jail, doesn't do much drugs. <laughs> um, good job, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and um, he seemed really lovely. Uh, went out on a, like a cute date. Like I don't think I've been on many actual date dates. Like Define a cute date. Cute date. So he organised um, – we went to th- – uh, there was like food trucks and he bought us matching Christmas T-shirts. And okay. <laughs> and um, we were meant to go have a picnic in Kings Park but then the weather turned bad. So yep. we didn't end up doing that and we left and we went back to his place. And he didn't try it on me which um, he said was because he's a gentleman. Like that's how did he did he Did he say that but like he made sure you knew that? No, 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 like it was just the, I stayed the night but he just didn't make a move and I didn't make a move and I still wasn't feeling yeah, yeah, a yeah. connection to him. I wasn't a, super attracted to him at that point but I was sort of still waiting. Like maybe it will just happen. Uh, it will build or something. Um, but then when we eventually did hook up and I talked about that you didn't try it on me the first two times and he's like that's because I'm a genuine. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so enough. moving along. So um, during the little courting period he uh, started sending me poems uh, which at first I thought was cute uh, in hindsight is cringe <laughs> anyway so one of these poems he did refer to himself as the green flag guy and um, they were quite they got at first they were like cute then they started getting suggestive and I was like oh this guy's actually because I thought this guy was probably maybe a bit frigid or something because he didn't try anything the first time and then his um, poems were quite like referred to what he was going to do in the bedroom and, and made himself sound really confident in the bedroom. So I was like, oh, he's got, like, this is quite surprising. Like he must be pretty good. If yep. he's gonna, if, 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 Time to if, walk the walk, gonna, boy. Exactly. He did not walk the walk. It was <laughs> – so I decided to like let's just do this. I'm going to go there even though I still hadn't felt the really strong attraction yet and then went there and it was fucking terrible. <laughs> and <then laughs> Okay, for the girls at home listening and for the guys, this is more helpful for the mm. guys, why was it – Fucking terrible, quote unquote. Uh, probably the part where not too oh. far into it, he goes, and he didn't need to announce it. I already knew, and he goes, "Oh, sorry, I've got some bad news." And I was like, "Don't say." It. And he's like, "I just came." <laughs> <laughs> and then, please tell. Is and then that he rolled ex- over. Oh my. This is a true story. <laughs> then he rolled over and he goes, "Would you like me to sing to you?" And I was like. I rolled over. I had my head in the pillow because I was like, try, I was like, oh my god, I need to leave. I need to get out of here. This is really, oh really, um, really bad. And then um, he started singing Barry White. Oh. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so I uh, made up an excuse and got the fuck out of there. What was your excuse? Really quickly, I used my kids. Like, yep. oh, I've got to get home to my kids. Um, didn't need to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so I came up with a poem last night. Uh, which would be my reply to his poems. Uh, it's, Roses are red, your poems are dumb. Nice guys don't finish last and you didn't make me come. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a general, a generally good session. Are you, like if you're looking to climax, mm. do you prefer a sprint or a marathon? 
Definitely not a sprint because I take a lot of time to get to climax. So with most men, it's over too quickly. So I'm never going to have been able to climax even if it was good, it was good while it lasted yep. because I need a bit longer. So I think foreplay is very important and there's nothing wrong with making a girl come before you put yeah, – inside. Uh, uh, what, what about if someone was able to sprint you to a climax? Oh, like that's still good. And I still like a quickie even if I don't climax. Mm. A quickie can be good sometimes. Um yeah. But if it's quickie and climax, quickie is, that, and climax. is that like yeah, no, the best case good. scenario or? No, because I think um, like sometimes that would be good, but I prefer, um, I think it's nicer to have it long and drawn out and have, try a few different things. And <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, that's, it's, it's good research for the boys. Yeah, cause, I think, so, I think yeah. another tip for men is it's like they think that the only way to have sex and climax is um, this one. And it's like, well, what are lesbians have been doing all these years? Like there's so many other ways to um, have fun together um, and I think they need to take the focus on it just being that because <laughs> if that's not doing it, that doesn't necessarily mean that's bad. That's still good but add some other things into it and then everyone's happy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, do you take control if you're not getting it and you just realise that this poor person needs some help or do you just go, do you know what I'm, sucks? I've, I've been through this. Yeah, I'm actually – so I lack boundaries. <laughs> and I, <laughs> oh, I'm not good – I'm actually not good at – for some – I feel like I'm quite a confident person. I can sit here and talk about this. But in the moment, I'm not good at speaking up. So, like, I do things with people I don't want to do it with <laughs> all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> I've done it a lot. <laughs> I'm not good at speaking up and if I don't like something so sometimes like if it gets really bad I'll like eventually be like okay you need to stop what you're doing because that's awful because I've been in situations where whatever he's doing is actually painful and it's not enjoyable but I didn't want to say Heard something and I think a lot of women struggle with that is like speaking up and not wanting to offend the person and mm. stuff which I feel like I should be able to do that because I feel like I am like quite a confident strong woman but for some reason I yeah I don't always speak up and I should no you've got to give them feedback yeah. I, I appreciate feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I like with – so that's more like with your one-night stands and stuff. In relationships I do give feedback because you're more comfortable with each other. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it hasn't been received well. Like uh, one ex got offended by me t- trying to tell him how to make me come, And I was like, well, it's my vagina. So <laughs> like I know exactly. how it works. Yeah, <laughs> it's not exactly. It's not like, yeah. yeah. Um, but then others have taken it on board and it's gotten – things have gotten better. So – Nice. Mm. Improvement. Mm -hmm. If you were – what would you tell your 18-year-old self going to the club for the first time wouldn't hook up? Um, Lay off the shooters. (laughs) Can you explain that a bit more? I was just – so I was like a black hat drunk drinker when I was young, when I was 18. Yeah. Um, Or I went through a phase where I didn't drink but instead I was on ecstasy. So I would be the dead because back then they didn't do – random drug tests and so I used to be the designated driver all the time because I just took pills. Um, so that was, that was a fun – yeah, it felt like the safe. Kids. <laughs> kids. <laughs> kids. <laughs> so kids, mm. do shit safely but yes. don't drugs, drink well, or, and now drive. that we know you can get drug tested for it, we know it's not <laughs> safe. <laughs> So we don't do that anymore. Yeah, but back I mean, in the day, back yeah. in my day, uh, they didn't have those. <laughs> mm, I mean, like I've got a big kid, uh, like kids audience. So right. they're going to experience so shit. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, this is the stuff that they need to hear because their parents don't talk about yeah. it. So – and the, the reason for this is I, I want them to understand yeah. that – Everybody goes through experimental phases. Yeah, yeah. You just have to make sure you're doing it safely with the yeah, people that you yeah, trust. Yeah. And – Think about the consequences yeah. and think about what they mean to you, mm. worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, we've like been through it. I feel like a bit of advice for girls is most of the men you let in, you'll end up re- possibly end up regretting if you're out drunk and drinking. I feel like you want to – there's um, – you want to make sure that person is someone who deserves to be in that space yeah. and most of them don't. So, <laughs> so how do you get now that you're in your early 30s, how do you get your, um, your hoo-ha to go, yep, you can unlock my Pandora's box, you deserve the right? <laughs> well, uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so I say these things about like making sure that someone deserves to be in there but then if I'm in the moment and I meet someone and, and like – YOLO. It just happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And has that has that uh, experience happened now, helped you kind of weed out 
the red flags more than before or have you still not learnt your lesson? Ooh. Yeah, nah, still learning. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm more aware though. Like I'll ne- I don't think I can get sucked in by the red flags, but I'm still attracted to them, mm. which sucks. Um, yeah, and I need to find like a nice red flag. <laughs> a nice red flag or a different green. flag. Oh no, flag. no, I've even had a nice red flag actually. So it's it's more than that. I don't know. I need to I need to look into this. Green some more. flags and red flags. <laughs> so you've had one green flag guy. Yeah. Are you going to just completely? Oh, that turned me off, and then I I felt so. I felt, I felt more dirty from that than any of the red flag ones. So then I felt like I had to go and hook up with some red flags to get it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and what's like the most, the top three common red flags in a guy that you fancy? Your, your DMs are going to be fucked after this. <laughs> red flags. Um, I don't know what it is. Like I don't... Uh, uh, like the overly the mas- masculine thing. Oh, mind you, my last ex wasn't overly masculine. Masculinity is a red flag. No, no, no like like the toxic masculinity. <laughs> Define toxic masculinity. Like the barky kind of guys. Like I'm still super attracted to them, even though I know they're going to ruin my life. Okay, how are they going to ruin your life? I don't know. I'm, I'm only going by experience being married to one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's fair enough, you know. <laughs> no, nah, they're, not, they're not all bad. They're not all going to ruin my life. But it's just um, – it's a lot and it's a, it's a very much – it's an unhealthy lifestyle mo- for most of them. They're very much lots of parties but too much partying and stuff like that as well. So it's just not healthy. So yeah. I just know that they're not right for me. Yeah. Not judging them. Um, they're not right for me. Yeah. And, and also, as much as I say there's some nice ones, there's also a lot of bad ones. And, you know, there's lots of ones that go to jail. And then there's a lot that treat women really badly. And for some reason I'm still attracted to them. But I'm not going to go there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What are you doing differently in your 30s than you are in your 20s? Um, I actually like myself a little bit more now because <laughs> I didn't used to really have a great relationship with, my, with myself. So um, I, think I, I think that's made a big difference. Um, because, yeah, I've learned to, like, love myself and accept myself a lot more. Whereas in my 20s I was quite self-destructive and didn't really like myself that much. Yeah. Do you put yourself first? A lot more. I still – like, I've got three kids so there's always a, a line at some point you've got to put them first. But at the same time I do think putting yourself first in some ways um, matters as well um, so that they get the best version of me when I'm happy and healthy as well. Yeah, exactly. Which um, I feel like for me and the type of person, not, not, not everyone is like this, not every mum is the same, but I'm the kind of person who still loves having my own life outside of being a mum and so I think divorce was perfect for me. Like this is, this is the way I meant to raise children, having a co-parent who has them sometimes and then I've got all this kid-free time to do me and that way when I'm with my kids I can be with my kids and, um, and I still have, you know, separate Nikki and mum and... Yeah, and how are the kids handling it? They're good now. And I think what's made a big difference, because at the, at the beginning uh, when we first, um, when I first got div- divorced from their dad, it was really messy and that obviously had a flow on effect, I think, with them because they could pick up the animosity yeah. and stuff around. Whereas now I've gotten to a place with um, their dad and his new partner that we're all, we're all getting along really well. Um, they have a new little girl. I think she was also a bit of a catalyst for everyone getting along too because um, she's so cute. Um, and I was just like, I can't hate your mum because <laughs> she's just this beautiful little bundle of joy, although everyone else thinks she's a little straight up savage, but I love her. She's, she's adorable. Um, I think, yeah, she's sort of bringing everyone together a little bit as well. But, yeah, the kids are, kids are doing really well now because mum and dad are happy and uh, I think us getting along has had a positive impact on them. Yeah, no, it's great that you you can get along with, you know, the co-parenting and and the new partners as well. Yeah, yeah. And she's been great. Like she's the opposite of me. So I'm (laughs) chaotic and ADD and disorganised. I'm not an organised mum. Um, I'm a good mum. I'm a very loving and affectionate mum, but I'm the mum who forgets it's library day and like... Calendars, (laughs) mate. Get the calendars. Yeah, like I'm just useless and she's (laughs) OCD. So... She's so good at keeping you on top of that stuff. And I'm like, this is fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. And, um, I mean, you don't have to talk about your ex-partner um, much, but, like, have they evolved uh, in, a, in a good way as a parent since? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think divorce was also good for him too. So because um, when we were together, um, I was doing the brunt of 
the parenting and was also the one home all the time. And then when we separated, he like on his time he was spending he spent more time with the kids than he did when we were together. And I think he's um, yeah he does seem to be. And then COVID happened and you couldn't really go out as much, so he does seem to be more family orientated now than he was before, which I think is great. That's good. Yeah, that's good. And uh, they're of school age yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not my youngest, sorry. My youngest is only three, yeah. turning four. So she starts school next year. Um, my oldest is starting high school this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's been, uh, I mean, from from my educative experience, the kids are in high school yeah. who have had oh, divorced parents. Which, my son knows who you are and <laughs> his friends probably follow you. Shit. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they'll be doing it too much, but uh, they're probably just on your TikTok. One yeah. one snippet on the TikTok will get them over. So have fun with that. Um, <laughs> Sorry, son. But, but yeah, the, um, the 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 kids that go to high school mm. with divorced parents, like fresh divorced parents, they struggle. Yeah, they struggle yeah. because their parents can't sort their shit out. Yeah, like with each other, it's like. Yeah. You got to sort your shit out because if you don't, your kids are going to suffer. Yeah, they're going to pay the price. Yeah, massively. and you, you, you know, they say stay together for the kids, but at the same time, you should. The, the kids feel it. Yeah, hundred percent. And you got to be civil. You got to show them what good parenting looks like yeah. by just getting over your differences. Yeah, and you've got to put your ego aside. You got to put, yeah. and sometimes you know, you got to put hurts aside, even if like you're not always going to get a, a, the apology you want. Sometimes yeah. as well, you've just got to put it aside, move on. Which, that's what we've been able to do, and it's made a huge difference. And I can see the positive effect it's had on our kids. Um, so I'm really grateful that we've got that co-parenting situation because there was a time when I didn't think we were going to have that and it sucked and it made things very difficult. And now we're just – it's just so easy now and it's actually really enjoyable. Yeah. What are you like with uh, parents uh, of other kids at school that are like in the same classroom? Um, I have always avoided <laughs> – <laughs> I used to have this thing. It's a real thing. I oh, I think it's a real thing. I call it um, school mum anxiety. I had it so bad though that I would on purposely, when Billy was in um, pre-primary, I would on purposely go to school late um, so that most of the mums were gone at drop-off because I just they, – they, they gave me really bad anxiety. I didn't like seeing them. I didn't like being around them because – they're like a gaggle of like they're just some of them, and they're really bitchy, and some of them are really bitchy and nasty. Like there were some nice ones, but um, I used to sort of avoid it a little bit. And then um, there was this one mum who we were pregnant at the same time. I was I was with, pregnant with my second, and then when we'd had our babies, um, we're at this like school event thing, and I've walked past, and she's like, "How do you lose all your baby weight?" And I actually hadn't. I just hadn't got. That big compared to her, you're wearing to spanks. Her, <laughs> but um, and then she's like, "It's okay, I've told everyone it's on because because you're on crack." And she laughed, but I knew she was not actually joking. Like she was implying to people that I was on drugs and that's why I'd lost weight. And it made me feel like shit that people would think. I mean, if you that. if you if you're in Rockingham Primary School, you're going to get that comment every day of the week. Yeah, it wasn't in Rockingham, but anyway, <laughs> it was it because we used to live in Chidlow, so it's a really small community, yeah. and it did. Feel, and they're very clicky because most of the people have been there for a long time, and I hadn't. And um, yeah, I just felt really judged. But that was also partly my own issues and anxieties because when I eventually over the years started to get to know some of the other mums, some of them were actually pretty nice, and it's good to have school mum friends. But every time we moved school, I was back at square one, and the anxiety would start again. Yeah. Did you yeah. ever like see another mum that had like full tats and you like kind of gravitate towards her? Um, so the last few schools, no, because um, so Chidlow, there wasn't many tattooed mums, maybe a couple, but I was definitely probably the heavy, he, most heavily tattooed. And then uh, at their last school, which was in Willerton, I think like, there, there wasn't even many Australians at that school, let alone tattooed people. So there was... Uh, it's because it's a very um, the area is mostly like Indian and Asian, and they, there's no people like they didn't have tattoos. They were professionals and stuff. So I was the odd one out there, definitely. But yeah. then I moved to Mandra, and Mandra's got there. Everyone's got tattoos there. Yeah, Bogan. right at home. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And uh, now that you have three kids um, and, yeah, your third one's getting there, walking about, probably talking now. Oh, yeah, she's um, almost four. So she's a full, like, little walking, talking human uh, with sass. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she'll start school next year. And then that's it. So you're done with kids. I'm so done. <laughs> Never, ever, ever, ever having another child. No offence. Children are great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've got the full set plus one extra. 
Um, any advice on up and coming parents? I'm going to become a parent in the next few years, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I'm excited. And uh, the the most common piece of advice I get is, it's the worst best thing you can do in mm. your life. Mm. Uh, so apart from that obvious one, what advice would you give to the uh, up and coming um, parents? Probably to ignore all the advice you get and just make your own way <laughs> and <laughs> make your own way. Every kid, every kid is different, and what works for some people doesn't work for you. And um, just go with the flow. And also, I think go easy on yourself and your kids. I'm not one of those. Um, I don't know. Maybe some people think I should be more of a disciplinarian, but I'm very much. I accept my kids aren't perfect and I'm not perfect so I don't have an expectation of them to behave perfectly all the time. They're not and they're not terrible kids. Um but I'm very I'm a very relaxed mum. Yep. Some people might say too relaxed but well, that's fine. I mean I think kids need to have some sort of a boundary. Yeah. But at the same time they need to have that exploration. Yeah, yeah, factor. like my middle child, everyone else thinks he's like so full on and the naughty one. I think he's my little bundle of joy. Like I don't actually see him being na- as being naughty. He's just having fun and being six and he is full on. He's yeah. very energetic and over the top, but I don't think he's ever being malicious or naughty or yeah. um yeah, so everyone thinks he's my naughty kid and he's like he's my favorite. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just very joyful. He's a he's a very um happy kid. And that, yeah, yeah. sprouts. I read that. I read that like their personalities come to fruition at around the age of four, mm. five, um, and then their formative years since birth are like super important. Yeah, I've to heard this too. It makes me feel terrible because <laughs> each kid's had a different experience. So my middle child, it makes a lot of sense that he's the happy. Um, the happiest one, I think, um, because his formative years was probably at a phase in my relationship at the time where we were quite in a good, better place. Whereas my young, uh, sorry, my oldest son in his formative years, my dad had just passed away and had relationship issues going on and it was, uh, yeah, he didn't get the best version of me and I can see how that's, so he ended up, um, I took him to a psychologist when he was six and he was diagnosed with anxiety um, and I think, and they, they explained that it's probably come from, you know, me and what I was going through and I was grieving. So he had his little stable world was tipped upside down when my dad passed away because yeah. he suddenly went from having quite a happy home to having a mum who was losing it all the time or crying all the time and a dad who wasn't there much and stuff. So Yeah. You get to see and, and, and showcase that through your experience and mm. you can give that advice. You mm. can, you know, talk about it. And from your own observations, you're not preaching it to somebody. Mm. So, I mean, I don't like giving parenting advice because I'm not a parent, but at the same time when I was a school teacher, I'd see patterns. Yeah. And then I'm like, I wonder if your parents are this type of parent. Mm. And they are. Mm. Either they're divorced or they're tiger parents or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Or, um, you know, they've had yeah. some traumatic moment in their in yeah. their family. Yeah. My God, it's like... Some parents do need help, yeah. a lot of help, and yeah. and it sucks because the kids, are, you know, that's the end result, and they take that with them unless they see yeah. a psychologist, which yeah. is good. Mm. Um, you know, yeah, I definitely feel like I haven't necessarily given the my kids the start in life or the life that I'd wanted for them, mm. but I think that's another thing. Um, as a parent, you have to just accept that things life doesn't always go to plan, and you can't compare yourself to other people and families. You just got to do your best, and I think the biggest thing is just focusing on making sure you got heaps of love in your home. Yeah, love and happiness. And if you feel like you don't have love and happiness, mm. and you let's talk about psychologists. How how and when did you have your first psychology session or psychiatry session? Mm. I think like when I was a teenager, I tried to go to a psychologist, but I'm not, I used to not be very good at talking. So unless they were really good at getting anything out of me, I just didn't give them much. So I didn't really get much out of it um, the first time I went. But now that you've got one frequently or what's Um, the... I was going quite a bit after, so when I first got divorced and it was really messy, it was not a nice situation and um, so I started seeing a counsellor then um, pretty much for a whole year um, consistently. And how did they help you? Um, It was actually really good and it helped, so talking through, so I was getting triggered a lot which... um, 
you have to learn that even though the other person might be doing something and, you know, it's not nice, you still have a responsibility for how you react to things. And um, I had to take responsibility for my reactions and not and learning how to, okay, I'm triggered, I don't have to react though and I don't have to let it upset me so much. That's, it is a choice and you can choose to operate differently. So I sort of learnt it's, and it was still a test. Like every time something new would happen, I'd be like – and sometimes I would – instantly react and then I wish I hadn't and then um, so it was definitely a learning curve but it, it taught me a lot and it made me better at um, managing my self and my reactions and also not letting other people other people's actions have the power over me to completely ruin my day or make me feel really really, really bad like um, yeah I've got I was able to rise above it sometimes and yeah um, What's the current thing that you're working on for yourself? I haven't been going. Uh, no, 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 no. I meant oh. like in general. Um, so I did start the year telling myself I would like to um, be sober and celibate. <laughs> <laughs> I've already failed. <laughs> <laughs> But that was because – and it's not because it's not like I have a drinking problem. I just really want to get focused on my goals this year um, and working on myself as far as my um, – just ability to be self-disciplined and motivated to keep working on my goals and I've sort of lost that the last year. I've been a bit all over the place and distracted and my ADD symptoms have been way worse. <laughs> I feel like – I don't know if it's an age thing if they get worse as I get older but I just feel – at the moment I feel really out of control of everything. Like I'm, I'm getting by but um, I would really like to just like – bring it all back in and feel like I'm on top of everything again. Yeah. And I thought that eliminating distractions and drinking and also the celibacy thing was more so to get myself like wait until I'm at a point where I am going to choose better partners yeah. than the ones that I've been choosing. <laughs> yeah, you kind of you get sucked in again, don't yeah, you? Yeah, so but I literally – so I was sober up until yesterday and then I had my first drink and I was like, oh. And then it – Two, then two weeks, you lasted two weeks, it's not yeah, bad. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> well, it's not just like – it shouldn't be a colossal failure. Now you can just get on the bandwagon. You, you, you last the two weeks, start again. Yeah, yeah. You know, try and beat that record. Yeah. You know? I think I, I think so. I think I will um, – I don't think I need to tell myself I have to be sober 100% for the whole year. I think I'm going to, like, start again and give myself a day off for my birthday next month. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's that's kind of what I'm at. Like, when I – when I go, all right, let's start the new year fresh. Mm. This was before, like years before. And then I'm like, my birthday is the 1st of January. Mm. I'm starting the new year probably pissed off my face. <laughs> and then and then this year or last year going into New Year's and seeing all these other New Year's mm. resolutions and goals, I'm like, you guys are all waiting over the next two weeks before Christmas, that weird Christmas mm. to, to New Year's period. And then you're going to start. I'm like, no, nah, I'll start now. Yeah. And by the time the new year hit, I had a rolling start. I was stoked. Yeah. You know, drinking beer was something that I was doing a lot of, like as a so social mm -hmm. thing and, and being, um, you know, friends with heaps of brewers now. It's like, oh, I want to drink your beer out of respect, but at the same time, out of respect to my body, I'm yeah. going to have to yeah. choose the cider or the ginger beer or now preferably the wine, the mm -hmm. red wine. Because the red wine apparently scientifically proven that it's good for you. It so, is, yeah. Yes, and all those antioxidants. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, not a whole bottle yeah. a night, mm. which is what I kind of wanted to do because I didn't want to waste a bottle. Yeah. But apparently it's it's okay after a couple of days. Yeah. So I'll take that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you gotta you got to just go with the flow but don't go with the flow if it's out of control flow. Mm. Yeah. you got to check yourself back in. So yeah, you've got your ADHD and yeah, you're struggling to focus sometimes. Do you have systems in place or? I used to, but I've just really got nothing now. So I'm, I've been really time poor as well because I'm, I was, I moved to Mandra, started working at a tattoo shop in Gosnells. My kids daycare is like in a different suburb, so I'm spending more than three hours a day driving. Jeez. Um, on top of my work day. Wow. So it's just been – and so by the time I get home, I've just – yeah, I've had no systems in place at home. I'm not organised at home. I'm not organised like with my shopping or – so we're ordering a lot of – And you've got red flags DMing you, ready to go. <laughs> Fuck. So, um, yeah, I really just want to get focused on – bringing some kind of um, routine back into my life and I almost feel like I've lost the ability, like, I'm like I don't even know if I'm capable of having a routine now because it was always hard for me to be routine and I've never 
been good at sticking to it. But I definitely have never been as bad as I am now. So I need to get something back in my life to um, get a bit more focused. Yes. And I think uh, you've and got... And self-care because that's the other thing. I haven't been looking after myself and I've, it, that has a flow and effect on everything Self-care else. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep, sleep well, eat well. Yeah. Physically fit. Yeah. That helps. Those three. Yeah. Sleep is the most important one. Yeah. Start with that. Mm. And then get then get into the eating stuff. Yeah. Because that, that's part of your day naturally because yeah. you need to live. So I notice the times where I um, do eat healthy and have some form of exercise happening, that has a flow on effect and I, and I think it obviously helps my brain as well. So I do, I do find myself more organised and able to do a bit more. Um, so I feel like I need to prioritise my health and I haven't been doing that, which is one of the reasons I wanted to lay off the alcohol was so that I didn't fall off the bandwagon on a Monday if I'd been drinking mm. on Sunday and things like that. Yeah. And then yeah, three hours a day, that's insane. Yeah, it's too much. So I'm actually moving back um, because the co-parenting situation become like healed Last year, I've decided moving back. It'll be the last move, not not moving again because it's not great for the kids to keep moving. But, um, yeah, so the, the driving will be a lot less once I've moved. Um, so that'll be good and I'll yeah. have some time back. And I'll have more time because my um, co-parent will have the kids more when we, move, when we live closer together. So um, I feel like I'll have more time to get back on top of everything. Yeah, that is important. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. So with your fringe stuff um how do we book tickets to see your show um you go through the fringe world website uh fringeworld.com.au and look up um hot blokes and spi- spicy jokes um and yeah you just get tickets through there um yeah i'm really looking forward to that it's gonna be fun yeah yeah tell me about your drink oh these these i love these ones these are the only ones I think. I don't know. There might be others, but they don't have sugar, so they're not like sickly sweet or anything. It's my favourite one. Do you know what I wish they would do? I wish they would make these, but in a frappe. Ooh. Because I love frappes, but they're so sweet. They're too sweet. Yeah. This would be great in a frappe. I love love these. Yeah. Who, who is it again? Um, Hunter, Hunter, Hunt, Hunt and Brew. Hunt yeah. and Brew. Yes. And the fact that they don't have any added sugar. Yeah, well, obviously I'm trying to be a little bit healthy, um, but it, it actually tastes good as well. I didn't think the first time I tried it, I was like, oh, no sugar at all. And I thought it might have that fake sugar, which fake sugar doesn't taste good either. Um, but no, it actually tastes really nice. Yeah, there you go. I like it. And yeah, that's the uh, one of the sponsors of the show. So Hunt and Brew, good thanks. Mm. They're, uh, yeah, I've been drinking this for ages. It's really good. There you go. Not, not, not paid at all for her to say that, so that's <laughs> nice. Definitely not, although you can if you want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that, with with them, they're like I've always chased things that I naturally liked anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's a natural fit and mm. uh, coffee milk and no added sugar. That's mm. it. That's that's the ingredients. Yeah. Well, it's it's good tasting coffee, so you don't need mm. the sugar. It still tastes nice. Yeah. That's it. it. Who's your dream uh, sponsor or Ooh. collaboration or brand deal? Nikki's up in the lights. She's getting brand deals because of her stand-ups blowing up. Ooh, who, who's in your DMs wanting to collab? <laughs> I've already thought of it, but I'm like, I don't know if it's appropriate Tell for me. your show. No. Straight up, I want the sex toys. Yes. <laughs> the adult toys can sponsor me. <laughs> How are you going to promote that on TikTok though? Um, I was always, so I was, I literally, I was going to make a TikTok the other day because I was just, <laughs> funny story. <laughs> so I was using a vibrator as a face massager and I just felt so good. <laughs> I just thought I could make um, TikToks of like using them for things that they're not meant for. Yeah. Um, would be funny. Um, Amazing. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go give you some uh, quick quick fire questions. Okay. Just give me like a quick answer Ooh, and okay. then we'll move on. What's the worst pickup line that you've ever heard? The worst one. I've got a really bad memory but I know I've heard lots of bad ones. Sorry. Um. What's, what's your pickup? What's that one? I don't use. Pick what's up your pickup line? Lines. I don't use fucking pickup lines. No. <laughs> I've I've had that one where it's like, are you an angel? No. What is it? You know the one where they say you look like you fell down from from the sky. Yeah. yeah. Stop it. Don't you don't do use pickup pick lines, but one guy is in the bar that's giving you nothing, but you want something from him. Mm. What's your approach? Oh, I let those ones get away. I'm not. <laughs> I need to be more forward. Um, I look at them and I hope that they'll make a move. 
Ah, that's it. Yeah. So, like, if you see a girl that keeps making eye contact with you, act on it because if she's if it happens more than once and she keeps looking, she's definitely interested. Yeah, the boys. Yes. Is there something you would like to change about yourself? Um. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Right now, it would be. Um. I would really like to. Um. Be healthier for all the aspects, like my phys- physical, physically, but also mentally. I really want to get healthy for all the positive benefits that it will have. Yeah. Okay, this next one is, is fucked. But what is the one thing you're deeply proud of but you would never put on your resume? <laughs> <laughs> uh, something I'm deeply proud of that I wouldn't put on my resume. So many things are going through that head. I'm just going to say my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Very proud of it. Very good. Um, what would be the absolute perfect date? Oh. The absolute perfect date. So the, the right person really counts because you can have like a really cool fun date with a loser and it's not going to be fun. Um, so it's got to be a really cool fun person. Um, and what are you doing? Oh, actually, I've been on the best date ever. It was – okay, so – Random dude that I met at the beach asked me out on a date, agreed. We went out, uh, we ended up taking some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> we went out, to, we took some mushrooms, we met at the bar, had some mushrooms at the bar, ended up going to Scarborough Beach. We rolled around on the grass, like laughing our heads off, ended up having the best night, ended up skinny dipping in the ocean at night time. Uh, we had, it was this, the best day I've ever been on. It was so fun. So. <laughs> Did you clap cheeks? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, on the nice. sand. That was oh. nice. For the kids that are listening, they got mushrooms from IGA. Yes. What are you? <laughs> what are you amazingly good at in a relationship? <clears throat> it's going to be sexual. I know it. Yeah, I'm trying not to. Don't, don't make everything sexual, Nikki. Uh, <laughs> um, well, obviously that. But no, I'm also good at. I think <laughs> I'm a really supportive partner. I'm good at trying to. Um, what's the word? I want to see everyone do their best. Yeah. Um, so I'm good at um, supporting people to be bring out, you know, bring out the best in them and do their best and I'm quite helpful if they have goals and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. What is something you have tried that you'll never, ever try again in a relationship? Hmm. I was expecting you to say marriage straight off the bat. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, no, no, I wouldn't. So I thought I wouldn't get married again because I don't necessarily believe I need to. I don't feel it necessary, but I might get married again and I will make sure I'm very o- open and honest with the person I'm marrying that I'm doing it for the party. Yeah. I would love to have another wedding dress and another party. Um, I don't care about after that. I don't care about the legalities. Yeah. But, yeah, I'd get married again just yeah. for the just for the party. Yeah, we had a fucking <laughs> just for the celebration. It's fucking the best fun. Party. I loved my wedding. I had a really I had the best wedding. Yeah. A three day. No, nah, I don't think you did. <laughs> I had the best wedding. What time? <laughs> what time of the day is best for sex? Um, hmm. Hang on, I'll start again because this will be better on the on the gram. What time is the best? Of oh fuck. What time? What time of the day is the best for clapping cheeks? Um, I think it's when it's spontaneous. So I don't know necessarily if there is the right time of the day, but if you're both horny and there's a moment, I like inappropriate times, to be honest. Um, Story time. You know, like like, like <laughs> coming home from work for a quickie or having a quickie at work or, you know, those kind of things, if you work with your partner. <laughs> no, yeah, go on. <laughs> go on. If you work with what? <laughs> if you work with your partner. So I've, I have worked with a partner and I have had sex at work before and it was fun. Did you get caught? No. Nice. That would have been fun. Nice. <laughs> I think I'm a bit of an exhibitionist, so I think the, the idea of being caught is fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last question, um, what is a dating deal breaker for you? A dating deal breaker? Mm-hmm. Um, straight up talking about your ex and hanging shit on them. Um is a deal breaker because even if you were in the right, yep. 
it's still not a great conversation to be having with your new date. And a lot of the guys that have done this on dates with me, uh, they sound like they're the ones in the wrong. And I'm like, dude, I want to get this chick's number and like congratulate her for getting away from you. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Um, And and have you had that experience where you have met with uh, an ex, uh, like a, one of the dude's mm. exes. And oh, no, no. Got mates, became mates with her. Um, oh, actually, so there was this uh, a ch- a chick I'm still friends with now when I was like 19. We both – so I dated this dude after her. So when she first – she'd left town and then when she came back so we were in this small country town, when she came back she hated me because I was hooking up with her ex um, and she didn't like me at first and then she's like – we got, she got to know me and she's like, oh, she's actually kind of cool. Then, then, we, then we became friends and I'd stopped um, seeing her ex and we hate him. He's gross. Uh, but now we're still friends all this time later. Mm. Yes. Mm. Bonding over the hatred of one person. Yeah. <laughs> all right. He was gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many, um, so many, um, when you look back and you remember, I'd forgotten about that one for so long. I was like, oh, that's instant minge cringe. Mm. Definitely keen on uh, a part three. For this, and I reckon it'll be after the fact that you try a couple more green flags. Yeah. And yeah, as your unofficial sex therapist, <laughs> definitely, definitely give the green lights a couple more goes. Yeah. Because there are good ones out there. There are. And just like the the librarian girl, that's all the green yeah. flags in the world. Yeah. She's going to be some freaky, doing some freaky <laughs> shit outside the library, you know yes, what I mean? Yeah. So... I don't know if it's the same with dudes, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, someone that's confident, yeah. someone that's funny, mm. and someone that's ambitious. I yeah. think I think those are the golden three yeah. that every woman I've should I've sort of got at. this idea of what I want and I want to start being that myself because I don't want to rely on my, waiting till I meet this person and hoping that that rubs off on me. I've got to be that version of yeah. myself and then I think I'll attract. So what is that version of yourself, Nikki? Um... Uh, motivated, ambitious, adventurous. Because I like, I love adventure, and I haven't done anything adventurous in so long. Like as far as like outdoors stuff and mm. things like that. Like I want to start getting back into nature and yeah. go on a hike, go learn to fucking kite board or whatever they call it. Yeah, do some cool stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Thanks for me. chatting and, and giving me Sorry, some confessions. Sorry, you probably have to censor most of it. <laughs> no, I'll be right. It'll be good. And um, for everybody at home, Nikki Valentine, as she likes to call herself will be available online at your nearest booking agent for her show on the Fridge Festival here in Perth. If you don't live in Perth, tough shit. Just follow her on Instagram. You can find all the details in the description. And uh, let me know what you thought about the episode. Please give her some uh, space in the DMs, you creeps. (laughs) And uh, if you do DM her, well, she's giving you advice of what not to do. Yes, and no one under the age of 24 needs to So do that because she likes it. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the show. As always, good thanks. Thank you for having me. Bye.